Hi guys, welcome back. Um, so, at a friend's place, um, thought I'd do a tour of his, his fish room. Here he is, Brendan, from Brendan Lumble's Fish Room. Yeah. Uh, I'll put his uh, link down below. But, yeah, here we are. Let's do a bit of a tour. Uh, firstly, uh, this is his, uh, his koi pond, but I think we'll cover this another day, because fish room is a bit to cover, so, but, yeah, all right, let's do it. Alright, here we go. Whoa. Really big one of those stretches on the whole fish room. Hey guys. Welcome to my fish room. Um, so I'll show you around a bit. Um, these tanks here are all two and a half foot by two and a half foot by one and a half, so they're about 250 litres. Um, one thing I take pride in my fish room is the fact none of my fish tanks are under 200 litres. Even my fry tanks, if we step back and look here, these are actually three by two foot and they're divided, but the water still flows between them to keep the water volume up. Um, so all my racks here are 90 by 45 um, treated pine and they actually have no back legs. The rails run back into the wall and they're mounted against the studs in the wall. Now the studs in the wall are also 90 by 45 and they're 450 centers instead of 600 so they're brought closer together. So this whole room is actually purpose built for this. If you look over here, um, these racks are all bolted to the wall. This, rack, this tank here is actually 7 foot across and it's suspended by the ceiling. There's no leg under that right hand corner. Um, it used to look a lot more special but since I put this rack in here it kind of looks like they're joined but they're not. That one's completely floating on that corner. Um, so you built this room from scratch? Right? Yeah, so this, this room is completely built from scratch from the ground up. Even the slab on the ground I laid the slab. Um, so we've got, I've got a pond here, it's got uh, stingrays and a couple of fish, not many fish. I've got my giant gourami. Um, I've got a... It's actually uh, got some of my rays in there, so he's uh, looking after a pair for me. So it's been here for a little while. <laughs> um, I've got a couple of stingrays in a 7x4 foot here, but that's actually going to change. Um, all the rays are going to be in the pond. She actually looks like she's about to give birth. Yeah, definitely. Look at that. Super close. I'm pretty sure she's... Yeah, they've moved back. I'm not sure if you can see, but sometimes you actually see movement. For anyone that hasn't seen pregnant rays before, you probably can't see it on the, on the camera here, but maybe a little bit. A couple in there for sure. It's more than one. Alright, so... Um, I've got a few flower horns here. Um, flower horns are a bit of a side project for me. My main focus is Malawi cichlids, so like over here. Um, Demosoni, they're quite hard to see, they're pretty skittish. have got like um, Ongi, um, Yellow Benga, Electric Yellows, uh, Dragon Bloods. Um, I've got some young star sapphires here, but they're not starting to marble yet. They're still pretty young. And um, these are my favourite. Buccochromus rhodesii. Decent size as well. Is that your canal? Um, so the male's 30 centimetres. Um, so this tank is two and a half foot front to back, so the depth perception makes the fish look a lot smaller than they actually are. Um, but that's the fry up there. So that's my Bicochromus fry. Um, they're not really fry anymore. <laughs> no, definitely a good size, like 5 centimetres, yeah. 6 centimetres. This is nice there. So, so many. Because the Bicochromus are my favourite, the 7x4 is going to be a Bicochromus colony eventually. Um, it's actually getting close because they're getting way too big for that 2x2 two two foot tank. Um, so then on this side here, the, I've got plans, I've, I've half built nine by two and a half foot by one and a half foot tanks. Um, I'm actually doing a build video on those tanks. They apply the same as these ones. Um, 
and I'm doing a full step-by-step -step video on how to build the ply tanks. I'm pretty much, I think I'm about three parts in. There's about three parts on my channel so far. Um, I'm running at AC, so I've got that set on 28 degrees pretty much all year round. I, I leave it running in summer, even though it's not completely necessary. And then, so the two centre racks are predominantly fry racks. Um, I do have a couple of fish growing out in them, but I try to keep it as a rule that it's only fry, because number one problem in a fish room is you never have enough room for fry. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail with the Africans, there's plenty here. If you want to see exactly what fish I have, um, earlier today I posted a 40 minute long video specifying every fish I have in my room. Um, uh, we'll link it below, so definitely worth checking out guys. Oh yeah, so everything's done by uh, automated water changes as well, so quickly touch on that. So this is just a basic brine shrimp hatchery. Um, it's the little 2 watt LED um, and just water bottles with taps on them. I hatch brine shrimp every day. Um, people say it's a hassle, but once you set up, I find it quite easy. Um, and then, obviously, I move on to one millimetre pellets after the brine shrimp, uh, 0.5 millimetre, sorry. And then, yeah, like Matt said, um, the room is on automatic water changes. So every every tank has a stand pipe. That's the drain. And every every tank has these black lines coming in. Oh, that's actually going. So here's a good example because the water change is actually running right now. <laughs> um, so like the smaller tanks have one line, uh, five foot tanks got two lines, um, seven foot's got four lines. I just kept it real simple. There's no taps on it. It's all four mil lines without taps and I just work from the smallest tank up. Um, the pond doesn't actually get any fresh water. The pond only gets all the fry tank runoff. Come on. But my fry tank water is, the nitrates are below 5 ppm and um, it actually dumps 500 litres a day into the pond. So there's definitely no shortage of clean water in there. There's more fry to here as well. Swimming in fry. Alright, so now we've talked about the room. I'm just going to quickly show you the water change system before this video drags on too long. Alright, so we've got two um, IBCs up here. They actually only, it only dumps a thousand litres a day, but I've got two thousand litres there if I ever want to increase that. Um, it just runs off a basic retic controller. There's a solenoid with a pressure pump. Um, the retic controller turns the pump on, water pumps in the room. And then there's just a normal tap here. The tap's got a retic, uh, solenoid on it and that just fills up. So this fills up at 6 p.m. at night and it sits there until 10 a.m. the next day cycling. These two pipes here, they're actually air lifts that run on an air pump. So they're constantly cycling those IBCs. Um, and that's my way of dechlorinating the water. Um, and I think that's about it, guys. I think that's a pretty good description of everything as quickly as I could do it. So we're just um, looking at the back of the fish room now. Let's have a quick look. Um, the the big pond that's sitting there, um, that's all filtered from behind here, the big sump. Well, Brandon's going to touch bases on it now. So, All right, we're back. We just have to move this, the fish tank, but here we go. All right, guys, so this is the filtration for the stingray pond that's in the fish room. It's actually outside because I don't have room in there to filter it. It's an, old, um, it's an old freezer from a um, deli and I've just fiberglassed the inside. Um, it's got a 90 mil coming in. I actually need to add another 90 mil. One pipe isn't enough because it's all gravity fed. Um, I struggle to get the water through it. Um, that's just sponge and jap mat and there's just a bit of everything in here. There's backy rods. There's actually gutter guard. Um, 
I'm a huge ambassador for cheap filtration. So this is just gutter guard from Bunnings, three dollars a roll. Um, and I keep that down the bottom and I put the ceramic media on top and that way I find the ceramic media doesn't get the debris in it. I've just made a mess. <laughs> um, I've always planned on filling that up with more with gutter guard. I've just never come to do it and I don't have ammonia problems so I don't, there's been no, it hasn't been necessary. So then we've got a 9mm pipe that comes in here. And that goes down six foot. So there's actually a barrel buried there. Let's see if we can get that. It's actually got water in it, so you can't. So then it's then it goes to a wire and there's the two there's two air lifts. Um, it doesn't work properly. The 190 mil into two creates huge restriction. And if I run two air lifts, I don't get um, it, it like gargles and one doesn't work. So I've got one blocked off and I've got 190 mil running off a LP40 air pump but it actually turns out that 190 mil is more than efficient enough like the amount of water that it moves is like 12 to 15 thousand litres per hour and um, I definitely don't need more than that. The, the whole system is 5,000 litres so I'm turning it over three times an hour and um, it's getting um, uh, 10% water change a day. Um, it's got fresh water coming in three times a day and the stingrays thrive in there. Um, I feed the hell out of them. I don't get any ammonia in there. And this cost me next to nothing. Right. So, as long as I've known Brendan, one thing he's nuts about is power as well. So everything is completely power efficient and that's why he's, he's running um, the what do you call the it? The All the air lifts. So this is air lift, even the big the big koi pond we've seen at the start. Same thing with that, all air lifts, so for sure. So that's one thing that uh is always careful about. So Alright, so uh that's it. That's that's the tour. So we'll we'll cover the pond another time. We're not gonna be too worried about that now. So um make sure you likes up if you like it. Um Give it a bit of a share. Um, definitely check out the link below to check out the build at the moment for the for the fish tanks. It's definitely interesting because there's not many pie tanks around. Um, yeah, no worries. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.